Hello, I'm Alan Povey, Technical Support Manager for Denso Aftermarket UK. Today we're here to talk about LAMBA or oxygen sensors. We know the regulations are going to change fairly dramatically over the next few years. By 2014 we're expecting to see roughly about a 50% cut in CO2 emission levels. In the UK you'll start seeing somewhere in the region of about 37 million LAMBA sensors within the market pace. So you're going to be seeing a lot more of these. What I'd like to do now is discuss the various types of sensors in the marketplace. Zirconia, Titania, Planar, AF and Wideband, as well as flange type and direct fit. It's important that we understand what sensor is fitted so that we can carry out the correct test on the sensor. If we're looking at one and two wire sensors, basically what we're looking at is switch type. They're turning the air and fuel on as required. If we're looking at three and four wire sensors, planar and AF, these have heating elements inside them. As you turn the ignition on, the heating element gets the sensor to its operating temperature as quickly as possible, therefore making the engine more fuel efficient. Five wire sensors operate the same way. These are wideband. So it's important to understand what we're looking for as output. Early O2 sensors work on voltage. Titania sensors work on resistance, so these are the early types. Planar and AF work on current, and wideband work on voltage. So therefore it's important that we understand what sensor we're dealing with and what we're looking for to test it correctly. What I'd like to talk about now is the installation of a LAMBA sensor. We've obviously all seen the flange type one, which are fairly easy to install. The threaded type one, it's important that when we remove this sensor, we run a thread chaser down through the port to actually clean out the threads. That we also use the special grease that's provided to lubricate the thread. This making the insertion into the port a lot easier. Cross-threading, over-torquing or dropping the sensor will actually damage the sensor rendering it inoperative. In conclusion, I'd like to re-emphasise the following. It's important to identify the type of sensor you're dealing with. It's then important to use the correct diagnosis for that sensor. Also the correct handling of the sensor. Knocking it, dropping it will actually damage it. And also the installation of that sensor that we use the thread chaser, we use the grease and we use the correct torque. That concludes our Lambda Sensor presentation and I'd like to thank you for watching.